Right, haven't made a video for a fair while. Today's project is to make a little tappity tap hammer. And uh, so I'm going to use some of this nice white Delrin for one end and a bit of brass for the other. Um, that'll be the centre bit. And I'll use some of this for the handle. So we'll sort of put all the bits together that way. So let's see how we go. There'll be some lathing and some tapping and dyeing and hopefully in the end it'll be a thing of beauty. And this is what I'm going to make. I'm starting with the ends of the hammer. Um, this is a piece of Delrin. Delrin is a plastic-like substance. It lathes really nicely. So if you've not um, used a lathe before, this stuff is really good to practice on. But please note, this video is just for entertainment. I'm a completely self-taught backyard bumbler. So don't take anything I do as gospel or something you should uh, emulate. But this is the sort of fun project that really doesn't require a lot of precision. Um, and therefore really great for beginners like myself. So I'm turning down the end of this piece of Delrin so that I can cut a thread in it. And that thread then will be able to be used to screw into the hammer itself, which you'll see as we get along. Chamfering the edge just makes it easier for um, the die to start cutting in. One thing I've found to my cost is that it's really important to get these threads cut nice and straight. Otherwise things don't screw in together properly. So I'm just using the end stock to push the die onto the material so that it's nice and straight. And I'll get it started this way. So it's cutting completely straight. Once I'm happy with that, I can release the end stock and just keep cutting the die as normal. Uh, um, using the die to cut the thread as normal. So here we are, we've got one end of the hammer completely done. So now for the brass end. Again, I'm just turning down a length to the required diameter so that I can cut a thread on it. Now this brass is nasty stuff. It throws all over the place because it chips in very small pieces. So I'm just going to stick my leather apron on so that I don't get as much in my clothing. While brass turns nicely, it really is a messy stuff gets everywhere in every little nook and cranny. Right, so the threads cut on the end. Now another chamfer with the file. I found that um, once the thread's cut, the end of the thread tends to be a bit rough, so this just makes it easier to get the thread started when you're screwing it into its hole. So 
So look at that. What a thing of beauty. Next step, I need to part this off and it's useful to have the same size on each end of the hammer. I find parting off quite intimidating, slow, so slow and steady wins the race. Once parted I simply turn the part around so that I can finish off the face. And please note, don't leave your chuck key in the chuck. So there's the other end of the hammer completed. Nice and shiny. I'm using aluminium for the head and the handle for the hammer. So I'm just sort of getting the proportions right just by eye and then mark it off. And yes, that's right, I couldn't get hold of any American aluminum, so I have to use Australian aluminium instead. I want a tapped thread in each end of the head of the hammer so that I can screw in the um, brass and the Delrin pieces. So just start with a centre drill and then straight in with the, um, the drill that's the right size for tapping out the thread. Always keep everything nice and lubed. As I've already mentioned, it's really important to get these threads nice and straight. Well, this is the way I do it. I don't have any special tool for this, so I just put the tap into the end stock and screw the end stock in as I move the head of the lathe. That gets the thread started and gets it nice and straight. And so now I can just put in the, the handle and um, cut the thread as normal. I found previously that when you um, cut a thread it leaves a bit of a lip on the edge of the thread and so unless you file that down the piece that you're screwing into it doesn't fit flush. Let's see how this one fits. Does it fit? Does it fit? Yes! Beautiful! So before I part off I'll just give this whole thing a bit of a polish up and then I'll part it, cut the thread in the other end and then try the Delrin piece in that end and hopefully everything will be fine and Bob will really be my uncle. Yep he certainly is. Now the head has threads both ends. I need to drill and then tap in the head for the handle. So it's always useful to have this in the center. So that's about right. Center punch so that I can get the drill started nice and straight. These auto center punches really are the ants armpits. Much better than having to try to hold it while tapping it with a hammer. So it's off to the bench drill to drill a pilot hole.
then the right size drill to tap the thread. I'm using M12 threads for this job. And then lastly, just a slightly oversized drill to go in just a little bit to get a bit of a lip for the handle to go into so that um, there's no thread showing when you screw the handle in. Unfortunately this thread has to be tapped in the vise so I've just got to get it as straight as I can. The hammerhead's now completed. Now I need to work out how long the handle should be. Now in the past I've made these handles a little bit too short so I'm going to make sure that I don't do that this time. That looks about right, so about there. So again I turn down the end so that um, I can cut a thread that will screw into the head of the hammer. Just like this. Yep, that looks all right. Good start. Because I want this hammer to be pretty, not just functional, I'm going to have a taper on the end that screws into the head of the hammer. So I'm just um, angling my top slide, just using the metal ruler to say, yeah, that angle looks about right, because it doesn't have to be precise. Now the top slides on a bit of an angle, I can start turning down that taper. Now the taper has been cut and polished, I can try the hammerhead again. And we can see it fits perfectly. Now it's time to give the other end of the handle a bit of a go. So I've, um, I'm using the end stock now to hold it because um, I've got a whole lot of length stuck out um, from the chuck and I'm going to knurl the handle so that it's got a nice grippy spot to hang on to. A knurling tool basically forces a pattern into the material so there's a huge amount of sideways pressure. That's why I've got support on the end stock. Otherwise you're likely to just bend the material. So slowly, slowly I start pushing the knurling tool into the material until I've got what I think is about the depth that I want. And once I'm happy with that, then I can start moving the slide along very slowly 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 cutting the pattern into the material. It's a slow process 
but you've just got to be patient. And eventually, I've got enough of the knurling done on the handle. I've also cut a thread into the end of the handle because I'm going to put a little bit of bling on it, just because I can. I'm going to put a brass knob on the end of the handle just to make it look even prettier. So, having cut a thread and then parted it off, I'm just screwing it into just a piece of steel stock to hold the brass because I now want to um, cut a radius on the end of that brass so that I've got a nice round end. And I've made a fairly rudimentary tool to do that job. Once it's set up, just a matter of cut, move in, cut a bit more, move in, cut a bit more, And eventually, it's almost done. I use emery paper and then finish off with a bit of steel wool to get a nice shiny finish. Nothing nicer than a shiny knob. A shiny knob always makes your tool look more purposeful. All the pieces are finished. Yeehaw! Now it's time for final assembly. I'm using blue Loctite to secure each of the pieces. With all the parts assembled, it's just a matter of giving it a final polish up. There's nothing nicer than a shiny polished tool. Not just functional, but a thing of beauty. And a really fun project, particularly for an amateur like myself. This sort of project gives me a sense of achievement and makes me feel as though I'm a real man. And if you're still watching, congratulations. What a marathon. But now it's time for you to get out of the shed and start your own project. <laughs>